Welcome to the TJ Malden Leadership Podcast, where we talk about life, leadership, and the gospel. Whoo, welcome to the TJ Malden Leadership Podcast. Listen, do I have a doozy of a story to tell you guys today, all right? I I made a major miscalculation in my life, and I am inviting you into this moment so that I can share something with you, with you that I learned last week. All right. Listen, I, I've mentioned on the podcast before, and I'm going to make this the story part of it, what happened really short. About a year ago, you, you know, I, I own a CrossFit gym and I used to CrossFit like six days a week and I ran like eight miles every uh, Friday or Saturday night. I would run through the city here in Tifton. It's kind of one of my things. I'd listen to podcasts. I'd, I'd, uh, I'd put the Bible on like audio and listen to what I was preaching the next day, listen through the verses and stuff. So exercise was this, this huge part of my life. Well, a year ago, I've been dealing with some herniated discs for like 10 years. Um, and every, every few months, like it'd give me a little trouble and then I'd get over it, give me a little trouble. Well, last year, um, it, it like completely messed up to the point that I could not work out and it introduced into my life, like some pretty incredible pain. Well, I recognized last week I, I did like a six mile walk, right? I, I went, started walking and, uh, you know, cause that's the most really that I can exercise right now without really messing up my back or, or being in a ton of discomfort. So I'm walking, you know, and it's been pretty regular, walking a couple miles a day, you know. And last week I, I walked like six miles and uh, even tried to run like a couple little stints in there. I was like, oh, man, maybe things are okay. Whatever. Anyways, I get back to my house and I'm thinking like, man, I haven't. It was the year anniversary since I had not CrossFit. And and CrossFit's a, like hit high-intensity training workouts where you use weights and you do pull-ups and all these things and burpees. And I was just kind of thinking like, man – I've been I've been living th- this back pain. This so I had to get an MRI. Three levels of disc de- degeneration with a herniated um, disc uh, on the very uh, very bottom of my spine, and which is called has caused most of the pain and discomfort. And uh, so I had an MRI. Been to the doctor. All these things. And by the grace of God, I put in this Facebook post. I was like, I haven't you know I haven't used pain medication one because I have an addictive personality. And I'm terrified that I might lose my ministry or get hooked on something. And that's just a reality. So um, I, I just post. But what I realize is, is in this moment, like I get done with this walk, and I'm like, man, I used CrossFit and workout as an escape. Like it was a place where I could go for, for peace. Like. I couldn't access my phone. Nobody would get a hold of me for at least an hour a day. I knew that I was I was just escaping everything, and I was exercising. Well, I made this Facebook post because I wanted people to be like, what I realized is like over the last year, I haven't been able to do those things. So I've been more intentional even with my relationship with Jesus and and what I've recognized and realized that Jesus is the better peace and Jesus is the better escape. So I was like, man, I want to share on Facebook Facebook, and I, this is something that I never do. I just felt prompted. I was like, and I, I take that as being prompted by the Holy Spirit. I was like, man, I just want to invite people into this journey with me and point to the majesty and the sufficiency and the goodness of Jesus. Like, I want people to know that that even in the hard times and the pain and the suffering, that Jesus is so much better. So I sit down and I write this long post, right? And I'm just like, I even put like the emojis of fire at the beginning, and I'm like, hey watch out, long post alert, okay? And so I just go into the, kind of the last year and what it's looked like. And and ultimately how, even yes, as a pastor, like I think everybody in life grapples with this question, like, is Jesus better? Like, is Jesus better than my health? Is Jesus better than wealth? Is Jesus better than instant sexual gratification in our culture right now? That would be a question. And it's is Jesus better? And and I think that's why so many people don't give up their lifestyle or they don't respond to Jesus or follow Jesus because that question, the, 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 the lie from the enemy that he is not better wins rather than the truth that Jesus is better. And so I just had this moment, just this moment of clarity where I was like, man, I want people to, to see this story and to be reminded that even if life is painful, even if the day sometimes aren't good, Jesus is better. Well, there were some unintended consequences of my Facebook post. And those unintended consequences were all these people being like, like, oh my God, TJ, I'm I'm praying for you. I'm so sorry. Like, 
oh gosh, and like pe- random people, y'all. I, I promise, I'm not making this up. People just start hugging me, like like I'm I'm running into people in, in like Publix and like walking up to the church, and people are just like wrapping their arms around me, They're like we didn't know you were in so much pain. We're so sorry, and I'm like. That wasn't the point of the post, man. Y'all, listen, I walked out of Dairy Queen in Sylvester last night, which was Sunday night. So you're listening to this on a Friday. But uh, months ago, when you get this, or maybe it'll soon, I don't know. But I walk out of a Dairy Queen in Sylvester on a Friday night, Sylvester, Georgia, the best Dairy Queen of all time. And a local pastor comes up to me that I've spoken to maybe twice in my life. And he's like, hey, man, listen, I just need you to know, I always pray for you. But like now, man... I'm just really praying for your back. And y'all hear me when I say this. I'm not belittling that. I am not I'm not making light of that. But for for me, it makes me uncomfortable for people to for me to even think like, "Oh my gosh, people misinterpreted the post of thinking like I'm sad or I'm depressed or I'm upset or I'm like stewing in my pain when really I'm, <laughs> I'm like really blessed and really good and feel good about life and and have come to a place where like I have navigated these things because of the sufficiency of Christ. And this is what I realized what it really was. One, there is a pride. Like that post was vulnerable and there were unintended consequences. One, I didn't realize how loved I was by my church family and people around me and people that wanted to pray for me. And and that was an incredible r- realization. But this is what I, I I really wanted to key on. You say, TJ, why are you, why are you telling us all this? Because there is a price. This is what I've learned in the last week. There is such a price and a power when it comes to vulnerability. Like there is a cost, like there, there, there's a price tag on vulnerability, but there is also great power in vulnerability. And Luke 14, 28 says it like this, for which of you desiring to build a tower does not first sit down and count the cost, whether he has enough to complete it. Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation and is unable to finish, all who see it will mock him, saying, this man began to build and was not able to finish. And so I think everything in our life comes with a, a price. Like, there, there's a cost to it. And, and honestly, I did not calculate the cost of my vulnerability. Like, y'all, I, I do not like... It. I, I speak from a stage. I preach, obviously, in front of a lot of people. Um, I do this podcast, right? But... But I don't necessarily enjoy being the center of attention. Many times when I'm done preaching, I just kind of like slip backstage, like get me out of it being in front of the people. It, it makes me uncomfortable. Even when people honor me or celebrate me at times, like it makes me highly uncomfortable. So I did not calculate that when I posted this vulnerable post, I thought, man, I just kind of share my heart and point to Jesus and people will see Jesus in this post. I did not realize, and here's the first point. I'm going to give you four points at least what I've experienced in my life, the price of vulnerability. The first thing, it cost me my comfort. Man, y'all, I was I was uncomfortable when random people would walk up to me and be like, can I hug you? <laughs> like, like, oh my gosh, it was so sweet and amazing. And I was like, sure. But like, that was uncomfortable to know that other people wanted to one, insert themselves into the story that I allowed. And that's what I'm about to say too. Like it was uncomfortable. It caused discomfort. I'm like, oh, I, don't, I don't know really how I feel now about, about this vulnerability or about this struggle that I've walked through being on display. It caused me great discomfort, but then it cost me my pride. Because here was my temptation, like, and even, um, uh, you know, for my own protection, I guess, or my sanity, even team members, I think Lindley was like, just hide the post. Somebody was like, just hide the post, just hide it. And, but what I realized is that it was costing me my pride, which is a good thing because I was like, well, I don't want people to think I'm weak or I don't want people to think I'm vulnerable. I don't want people to think I'm in pain. I don't want people to think that I'm suffering. And it's like, hold on a second. (laughs) Isn't that the human experience? Aren't we all weaker than we would really like to explain? And listen, I know we live in a world of like the Andrew Tates and all these alpha males getting online and telling you that you never show weakness, you never show vulnerability, and you build your best life with strength, and you dismiss anyone who disagrees with you, and you just be you. And it's like, well, that's not really the human experience, and it's definitely not the Christian experience. Like, because every person suffers with at some point with some kind of weakness, so it may, maybe it's a, a medical weakness or a moral weakness or or some difficulty that we walk through and and if we just project pride like oh man I'm 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 super strong and I'm invincible then it won't and I'm going to get this to into into this a little more in the power of vulnerability 
Like it never allows people into our journey to walk with us. And so really our pride, if we're not careful, will isolate us. And that's what I realized. And and y'all, I never, I never, I only post on Facebook to like share and reshare church stuff because our media team's freaking awesome. And they put all these cool little clips together and all this stuff and even this podcast. And so I'm just like reshare, reshare, reshare. And I definitely hear me say this in the last seven days after I made that post, I've been resharing like crazy, like moving down the page. (laughs) But here's the thing. Here's, here's the truth. I want to be seen as great. You want to be seen as great. I want to be seen as smart. You want to be seen as smart. I want to be seen as invincible, and you want to be seen as invincible. So we don't let people in, and our pride wins. So we get to fake believe or make believe, if you will, that we're invincible and we're all-powerful and we're strong and we don't need anybody And what really happens is we've isolated ourselves into this island of pride that nobody gets to come on with us. We don't get to celebrate. We we don't get to be real. And so I realized, man, the price of vulnerability was my comfort, but it was also my pride because now, oh my gosh, people know that, that, man, there's a chink in my armor. Like, like there's some times that, that, that I, I struggle with pain. Sure. There's some times that, yeah, I struggle with discouragement or whatever. I don't live in a perpetual state of it, but like, I'm not perfect. And, and you say, well, t- duh, but y'all, we live like we are. Like Facebook and Instagram have create, has created a culture of highlight real humans where we only project our best. We only put on the mask of the best features or the best qualities of us, of ourselves, and we never let anyone in. So we are systematically, and I would even say, like, as a culture, we're degrading on the inside. We are deteriorating on the inside while the outside looks perfect and beautiful. So it cost me my comfort. It cost me my pride. This is what I realized, too. Here's a price. Here's one of the prices you pay, the price you will pay for being vulnerable. You will be misunderstood. My, my only desire in that Facebook post was to point to the sufficiency of Jesus. Like there was not an ounce of like, oh, woe is me. I want somebody to pat me on the back. Somebody come give me a hug. Oh, I need people to pray for me. Like that was not my desire. Like like I abhor, honestly, like whiners and complainers. And that's a struggle of mine. I'm like, like I will lean more to pull yourself up by your bootstraps. And this is why I'm doing this podcast because this has been really sanctifying for me and good for me. I had no idea that being vulnerable, I would also be so misunderstood. And if we want to be vulnerable, we have to be confident in our own story. We have to be confident in our own intentions. And we have to be confident in ourselves if we are going to be vulnerable because you will 100% be misunderstood. And this is what I realized. I put this thing out for the glory of God. Like, Gene, I felt prompted by the Holy Spirit. Like, man, somebody needs this. And that, that's how I felt. I was like, somebody needs to hear this journey. Somebody needs to glean something from this journey. So I want to share this part of my life. I had no idea I would be so misunderstood. Y'all, I've been getting messages about um, about prolotherapy, about stem cell research. I've been getting uh, recommendations for surgeons. I've been, I've, people have been like, hang upside down from the rafters in your barn. I'm, not really, but like I've been getting all of these things, all of these unintended, all of these unintended reactions to this moment of vulnerability and people read their own story into what you're writing or what you're saying. So I, I think you, and this is something that I've always known, but I was reminded of. Um, you have to be okay with being misunderstood if you're going to be vulnerable. Like if you're going to be who God called you to be, if you're not going to wear a mask you, in your leadership, and, and this is what I'll say, like like when you think about life leadership in the gospel, in your leadership, if you're going to be vulnerable and you're going to be real, you are going to be misunderstood. There are people that will be mad at you at times when you have the best of intentions to lead well with integrity. There will be people that will be wounded when you just speak the truth, even in love. You're going to be misunderstood if you choose to be vulnerable. Now, if you don't choose to be vulnerable, you have the incredible ability then to dance on eggshells and make everybody feel like at peace, but it's this false peace. It's a false narrative if you're not being vulnerable. So I I would encourage you to take the chance to be vulnerable, to be a little bit in discomfort, to let your pride fall, and to take the risk of being misunderstood so that at least least you could be and live in who you are and how God made you and the truth of your life. The last thing, it might cost you influence. And this is what I realized. Like a part of being misunderstood is like for me, coming away from this, this 
Facebook post, this uh, this situation, we'll call it, in, in my life. And it's it's not a huge deal. And people are like, man, you're making a big deal. I said, no, I, I just learned some some valuable lessons on leadership through this. It could, you know, because here's the thought, right? Like, well, what if I what if I am seen as weak? What if there was somebody that had put me on a pedestal and 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 what if there's somebody who had, had followed me or or was listening to the things that I was saying or was watching my life and now because I have this this physical limitation in some areas and I I grapple with this pain, what if I lose influence in their life? Well, it's a price. It's a cost. Like, like, isn't that good if that happens then? Because they were following you on a false narrative. They were following you thinking you were invincible. And this points to the whole theme of the main post when I originally said it, and the main theme of this idea, that Jesus is better, that I'm a faulty leader, <laughs> that I'm a weak leader, right? Like that I'm incapable of filling up in your heart or your life. And this is not just true of me. This is true of you. If you're leading people, like you cannot be Jesus to them. You are not invincible. Like you are weak and frail and in desperate need of the grace of God. And you're like, no, tell me I'm great and I'm strong and I'm powerful. Yes, we are all of those things, but only because of Christ. And if you think, if you have the savior complex that you can heal people, that you can change people, that you can be the ultimate help to people, my gosh, you will train wreck your life and your ministry in a heartbeat. You'll train wreck your business. If you think that you have all the answers, and that you have to be the ultimate strong one, and you can never bend, or you you know you, you can never be seen to to be vulnerable or to suffer or walk through hardship. No, I would argue this: real character is made, and real leadership is earned when people watch you walk through adversity with your head held high and with Jesus being the song in your heart. Like I, I've come to know that to be truth. So that, but that's the price you pay. And that was like when I lay my head down on my pillow after I. I know I think, y'all know I think too much. I tell you that all the time, but I'm like, all right, it cost me my comfort. It cost me my pride. I was definitely misunderstood some. And it might have cost me some influence. I'm like, you know what? That's all right. Because I was able to just lay the mask down for a minute. And I, I wonder for your life and ministry, how many of you are resisting discomfort? You're clinging to your pride. You're refusing to be misunderstood at the expense of telling the truth, of, of not telling the truth. And you're garnering all this influence. You're leading all these people, but they don't really know you. They don't really know what you're going through. They don't really know who they're following. So I, I guess I could say like this before I get into the power of vulnerability. I would rather in my life cultivate relationships and lead a few people that actually know me than lead a mass of people that have no idea who I am and they have what version I want them to see of me. All right. Here's the power of vulnerability. That got deep quick, man. Even the tone in the room, everybody's like, what the hell? The power of vulnerability. You say, well, well, TJ, why then? Like if it's uncomfortable, if it costs me my pride, if I might be misunderstood, if it might even cost me some influence, why should I be vulnerable? Well, I'll tell you this, a mix in the mix of all of those messages and direct messages that I was getting about prolotherapies and stem cell research and all of this stuff. I, I got a message from a dad and uh, he said, hey, man, he said, my kid literally asked me this week, when's your back going to be better so we can play together? And he said, I sat here and read your message and I just wept. He was like, and in the ultimate end of his message was like, I'm realizing that Jesus is better and Jesus will carry me and Jesus will lift me up. And I'm like, okay, so at the expense of comfort, at the expense of pride, at the expense of being misunderstood and the expense of even maybe losing some influence, I was able to, through vulnerability, cultivate hope for somebody. And so what if, what if our willingness and desire to always be like all put together and prideful and like live this mascara life where like everything looks perfect on the inside we're holding someone else back from hope because they're looking in on our fake perfect lives, thinking that other people don't struggle like them or walk through them. Listen, our vulnerability, the power of our vulnerability is that it cultivates hope in other people. Other people watch us walk through difficulty and hardship and cling to Jesus in the process. And they think if they made it, I can make it too. So the power of vulnerability is that it cultivates hope. Oh, I love that. It cultivates hope. And, and, and I'll say this, that I had multiple private messages and text messages that were just like, hey, listen, I'm walking through a hard time right now. And, and, and I did not know that I needed this, but this ministered to my heart, this ministered to my life, and I'm just so hopeful now. 
you're right, Jesus is better. Jesus is the better escape. Jesus is the better peace. And so I, I wonder how much more hopeful the world would be, your business would be, your family would be, your ministry would be, if you and I were willing to consistently be vulnerable. The second thing is this, is that it disarms the critics. And you say, well, TJ, what do you mean by that? Well, listen, when, when we present a plastic when we present plastic leadership or plastic parenting or plastic strength, and you say, what do you mean by plastic? Something that will break. When we present that to the world, there's going to be a day that something cracks, something messes up, and then the critic has the opportunity to say, ha, see, he is weak. She is vulnerable. She, she isn't perfect. He isn't perfect. Listen, when we're vulnerable, when we live an authentic life in front of people, it disarms critics. When we are willing to call out our own flaws and our failures and our difficulties and our pains and our anxieties, it begins to disarm the critic. Like, man, people can level all kinds of things against us. But listen, at the end of the day, I say this is about life leadership in the gospel. We know who we are and who we're not. And Christ is the only thing that makes us who we are in him. And so I wonder what it would look like if in your life you chose to be vulnerable and allow it to cultivate hope for others and then disarm the critics. Like so many of you are and, and it, the, the, when I say so many of you, I'm including myself, and we, we live lives scared that we'll be found out, worried that we'll be found out. Like, what, what if my team finds out that I'm not great at X? What if my church finds out that I struggle with X? Like, so all of these critics have all of this ammo. They have the hammer ready to beat us over the head with it. But what if we could cultivate good, healthy vulnerability where we begin to disarm the critics in our lives? We take the weapons back, and we use them as a weapon of authenticity and vulnerability ourselves. So the power of vulnerability that it cultivates hope for others, it disarms the critics in our lives, and it creates a culture of transparency. Like, this is one of the most beautiful things when I think about how powerful this is in vulnerability. When I begin to share, like, hey, I'm not perfect. There's areas that I have weakness. There's areas that I struggle with sin. There's, there's these areas in my life that I don't have it all together. That cultivates a culture of transparency where other people look and they can feel safe to say, oh, okay, I don't have it all together. I need something more than me to get me through this. So tell me about this Jesus that you have. It cultivates, the power of vulnerability is that it can cultivate transparency in our lives. And you know, maybe, I don't know, maybe I'm just at a place where I'm like, I'm getting older, y'all, you know what I'm saying? I, I just don't want to live with a mask on anymore. And I don't want to live, I don't, I don't want to be in a friend group where everybody wears their mask. I don't want to be in a family where people wear a mask. Like, I just want to be a part of cultivating cultures of transparency, even if that costs comfort, even if that costs pride, even if that costs misunderstanding, even if the cost of that is losing some influence. Because if we're not real, what are we? The fourth thing, after cultivating a culture of transparency is this, it creates community. I did not... I, I already told y'all this. Y'all know this about me. I'm not comfortable with attention, right? I'm not comfortable with people being like, oh, I love you. I'm praying for you. I'm thinking about you. That just makes me feel like, man, I don't know, I don't know how to feel. You know what I mean? Like, it just feels real weird to me. And I know you're like, TJ, you're a ministry, but yeah, it just, it, it, it's uncomfortable to me on some level. But what I realized is that my, the vulnerability that I walked in cultivated community. It allowed people, it allowed this bridge between my leadership and my influence, it allowed this, what would be a perceived gap to be closed a little bit. It allowed people into my story and into my life in such a way that, that now they feel like they're carrying this burden with me. They're praying for me. And I'm so grateful. Like, like I said earlier, I'm not making light. Like it's, I'm not treating this as a trivial thing. The fact that people would pray for me and love me and reach out to me Man, it, it has created th this sense of community of being like, oh man, like people see me. And so I wonder the power, the power of vulnerability in our lives, it cultivates hope for others, it disarms the critic, it cultivates a culture of transparency. But at the end of the day, it also creates community. Like if I'm willing to be vulnerable and, and I'm, I really begin to live the scriptures because what that's saying when I'm vulnerable is, hey, you know what? Jesus is sufficient. He's the better peace. He's the better escape. But you know what? I need you, bro. Like, hey, sister, I need you. Like, we need to walk through this life together because we, like, like, none of us have it together. None of us are perfect. 
None of us have the strength. All of us. And but, but the beautiful thing is we make up for each other's strengths and each other's weaknesses. If we would stand together, if we would live in community, if we would allow vulnerability to create community. Pride creates isolation. Vulnerability definitely creates community. And the last thing, and this is the most efficient, like what I, what I recognized in being vulnerable the power of vulnerability is it gave me an opportunity to exalt the sufficiency of Jesus. And I know most of these talks, most of these podcasts, I mean, this is season two, episode 15. So like, like we've been at this a minute, you know, usually I don't, I don't get hyper, hyper personal, but, but man, I recognize you say, TJ, well, why are you taking us on this journey today? Why did you post that on Facebook? Like, why did you let people in like that? Because at the end of the day, it exalts the sufficiency of Jesus because it was it was a good reminder for me that man I, I'm not all powerful, I'm not all strong, I'm not all wise. Like I don't have all the answers. Like that's why I show up and talk to you guys every other week because I'm like I'm just trying to figure some things out and, and like invite you into the story. I throw my email out there because I'm like I don't know everything. But man, this is not. It's been an opportunity for me to look and say, you know what? Out of all these things that I do know and don't know, Jesus is better. Jesus is a better escape. Jesus is a better friend. Jesus is, he's a better warrior. Jesus is a better leader. Jesus is a better pastor. Jesus is a better father. All these things like Jesus is better. So it's allowed me to exalt the sufficiency of Jesus and to remind people around me that, yeah, you look in my life, you look in on my life and you see, you see a business owner, you see a pastor, you see a worship leader, you see a podcast cultivator, you see, you see these things but man, there are so many areas in my life that need healing and that are broken and that God is mending back together. And at the end of the day, out of all of these things, what I realize is that, man, Jesus is a better peace. Jesus is a better escape. Jesus is a better pastor. Jesus is a better leader. Jesus is the better. And if there's nothing else that I get to tell you guys, and, and for some of you, being this vulnerable is going to cost influence. You're not going to listen to the podcast anymore. But but at the end of the day, this opportunity to tell you that Jesus is better. Jesus is better than your business. Jesus is better than your team. Jesus is better than your marriage. Jesus is better than your, than your, your partying experience right now. Jesus is better than your goals. Jesus is better than anything you could experience in this life. And until you put the better in its rightful place, all of these other things will keep breaking down because they can't handle your worship. They can't handle all of your devotion and all of your love and all of your expectations, but Jesus can. So if there's anything, if there's nothing else that I get to share with you, it's that Jesus is better and the price of vulnerability is worth it when you consider the power of it. The price of vulnerability is worth it when you consider the power of it. Listen, thanks so much for hanging out with me today while I, I walk through this uh, social media trauma that I experienced. Uh, I'm just kidding. It's not a trauma. But listen, I, I am so glad that you give me your time, that you hang out with me, that we get to walk through this stuff. And I, I say this with with a full heart and a true heart. Like, I'm good, y'all. <laughs> I really appreciate you checking in on me and reaching out. But if you have any questions, if you, um, I'm going to put some some links in the show notes even to when it comes to um, pride and, and being misunderstood and disarming critics. But if you have any questions, if you have a topic, you say, man, I would love for you guys to dive into this or think about this. Uh, make sure you email us, TJ Malden Leadership Podcast at gmail.com. So email us, tell us your thoughts. Listen, like, subscribe, share. This team works really hard on this podcast, and it would mean so much to them if you would just blast this on all your social medias, if this has been beneficial and helpful to you. So we love you guys. See you next time. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the TJ Malden Leadership Podcast, where we talk about life, leadership, and the gospel. If you enjoyed this episode, share with a friend. For more content, follow us on Instagram and YouTube. If you have any questions you would like to ask TJ, whether it is about life, leadership, or the gospel, you can email those to TJ Malden Leadership Podcast at gmail.com. Thank you again for listening, and we hope you join us again on the TJ Malden Leadership Podcast.